Karan Thapar has raised a very important question in his new opinion. He asks, what does it feel like to be a Muslim in today's India? He also wants to refine that. He says that he's not talking about the rich, influential or well-educated. He is specifically referring to poor and often illiterate Muslims who have little by way of support other than what they can provide for themselves. They are the vast majority and what does it feel like to be one of them? In the last few months, they have called for genocide and ethnic cleansing. Accused of rioting, their homes have been demolished, often before their presence leaves aside guilt was established and at times without prior notice. Even widows, who are beneficiaries of the PM Abbas Yojana, has thus suffered. Their minor children have been detained for hearing Pakistani songs, whilst men who claim to be Hindu priests have publicly threatened to rape their women. This is by no means a comprehensive list. It's simply a collection of things that occurred to Karan Thapar when he started to write. Proper research would throw up many more. The question is, what would it feel like if this happened to you? The truly bizarre part is despite this despicable treatment, many of the consider Muslim appeased. If only we knew the facts, the truth is that in almost every sphere, Muslim representation is way below their proportion of the population. As far back as 2006, the Sachar Committee established that in economic and social terms, Muslims are worse off than scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. This is what that amounts to. Karan Thapar is relying on Akar Patel's book, Our Hindu Rashtra. Muslims are nearly 15% of the population of India, but only 4.9% of state and central government employees, 4.6% of the paramilitary services, 3.2% of IES, IFS and IPS, and perhaps as low as 1% of the army. In proportionate terms, they should have 74 seats in the Lok Sabha. They have only 27. India does not have a Muslim chief minister in any of its 28 states. In 15, there is no Muslim minister. In 10, there is just one, usually in charge of minority affairs. Neither in 2014 nor in 2019 does the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party have a Muslim Lok Sabha MP. Patel says it hasn't fielded a Muslim candidate in any Lok Sabha or Vidhan Sabha election in Gujarat since 1998. That's 24 years without a Muslim candidate, although 9% of the population is of that faith. Karan Thapar says that he could carry on, but he won't. He has made his point and he hardly needs to add that Ra also does not have nor has ever employed a Muslim. In these circumstances, it would be very surprising if it had. However, what these facts don't convey is what it feels like to be the subject of deliberate, continuous and often escalating hate. Karan Thapar says that Hindus cannot know this because it's never happened to them. He cannot even imagine politicians calling Karan Thapar a termite, classifying him as Babar ki Aulad and repeatedly telling him to go to Pakistan. Yet that's what the Muslims of India face almost every day. Last week, 13 opposition leaders wrote to the Prime Minister of India asking him to speak against the words and actions of those who propagate by God tree. Uh, he did not know if he will. For an explicably long time, the Prime Minister has been silent. But what about the rest of the people of India? Do they do not have a duty to speak? Isn't their silence for whatever reason permitting the worst voices to be heard and get away with it? These days when wisdom is often reduced to WhatsApp memes, there are only one that applies to all of them. Evil happens when good people stand by and do nothing about it. If you want to put that in highfalutin terms, let Karan Thapar rephrase John Don. No man is an island. The bell that tolls today for Muslims will one day toll for thee.